Hi YouTube, today we got a little bit of a special treat for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the brand new Colt Anaconda 44 Magnum just released a couple years ago in 2021 and I'm going to compare it to a vintage Colt Anaconda. And we're going to look at some of the differences and some of the similarities. And we're going to figure out which one's probably the better gun. All right. So they're both six inch. This one was made like a year ago. I don't know what year. There's no way to tell, but it's a brand new gun. I mean, I've shot it some, but it's a brand new gun. This one was made in 1991. It's easy to tell with Colt. All you do is plug the serial number in, and they'll spit out on their website what year something was made. So, I'm going to start off by telling you folks that I am one of the biggest Colt fans that you're ever going to come across. I just want to lay that out there before i get into this little discussion here i am a huge colt fan i love pretty much anything made by colt and there's an old scene that goes around that says they don't make them like they used to well that is true and i'm going to clear that up a lot when i go through what i'm about to show you with this so let's start off by looking at this old thing so this is made in 1991 this is a Colt Anaconda 44 Magnum. It says double action revolver. It's one of the only ones I've ever seen that just say double action revolver on the side. And I do not own this gun, by the way. I borrowed this from a friend of mine. I used to have one, and I ended up getting rid of it. I've mentioned that before. but So it's made in 1991, 44 Magnum, 6 inch. It's exactly how it comes from the factory. It comes with these rubber grips on it. They say they have the Colt medallion right here on it. You have the Colt horse right here. And the roll mark says Colt Anaconda 44 Magnum. Okay, the new one, this is how it comes. It comes this shiny. The roll mark's a little bit different. It just says Anaconda 44 Magnum. I'm trying to get it to show up without glaring too much. It just says Anaconda 44 Magnum. It's got the little horse on it. Flip it over. The roll marks on this side are a little bit different. It doesn't say double action revolver. It just says Colt and has their little pet and stuff. This one, of course, has got the ugly serial number and the barcode on the side, which is my only complaint with the new Colt revolvers. All right. Let's start looking at some of the differences here. Besides the fact this is matte stainless, there's nothing wrong with matte stainless. I like it. But let's start with looking at how they do the trigger on this one. This is probably one of the worst jobs I've ever seen. This is all cast, and it's not finished off at all. Look at this hammer. It's just really dull, unfinished, unfinished metal no finish work whatsoever scan over it a little bit so we have a trigger that does have serrations on the front of it it's obviously cast unfinished hammers unfinished it's got serrations on top it's pretty small for being a 44 magnum hammer it's small but it's it's serviceable new one this trigger is perfectly finished serrated on the front the same the hammer perfectly finished just like the rest of the gun it's a little bit bigger the hammer is so it's got a more reachable spur look at the attention to detail they paid the finish work on this it's just unbelievable all right on the top of this, it has what, what I'm going to tell you is the only advantage in this gun and the new Anaconda, the sight. The factory sight is pretty awesome on this. It's got a white outline on it. It's fully adjustable for windage and elevation. It fits tight. It works good and all that. 
this gun, the new one, I cannot see that about. It had past tense a terrible sight on it. I bought a Wilson Combat rear sight and installed it. It cost $125 and that fixed everything. This sight was wiggling around in here and everything. This Wilson Combat sight is a must. These guns are no-goes without that. You put that Wilson Combat sight on it, it no longer has any problems. All right, so the new gun also comes with black rubber grips on it. I changed those. These are synthetic ivory grips. They're from a company called Boone Trading Company. They're somewhere out west. I think they dressed the gun up really good. It was about the only thing available at the time when I got them and put them on here. I was like, it really looks good. Now we're going to get into the brass tacks. This whole entire gun, I can run this over here and my fingernail will skip on this. It's so rough. It's really sharp edge. It's hard for it to show up on camera, but it is not finished very well at all. Everything is sharp. If you look on it, nothing's finished off really good. All the edges are sharp. It's like they rushed to get it out the door. Look up real close here. You can see the poor, poor finishing on it. Look at the new one. Everything just fits together so nice. Everything's smooth and finished off really nice. You don't see all the tooling marks on it. Everything's blended together good. It's just, I mean, they really, the fit and finish on these new guns are incredible. Now, you remember, they don't hand fit these anymore. Well, they didn't hand fit this one either, and I'm fixing to prove it to you. All right, so one of the other differences is, look at the size of the cylinder. Now, this isn't such a bad thing, but I'm just going to give you a comparison. This cylinder on the new one. It's probably easily a quarter inch longer. Easily. This thing is massive. It is massive. It's not even remotely close. I've got them touching side by side right now. Look how much bigger the cylinder is. How much beefier this new gun is made. This thing will definitely handle a larger caliber. If Colt ever decided to go that route and make a larger caliber, like 454 Gasol or something like that. This gun will handle it. There's no way this one would. No way. Now, I'm going to work this action, and I hope this turns out on camera, but I'm going to hold it real close. It is so rough. I'm going to pull this trigger. The double action is not bad, but not many double actions are bad. Now, listen to this. You feel and hear stuff just digging in there. This double action pull is probably 15 pounds, and I'm not kidding you. It's like almost locked right there. It is terrible, and that, that action is not good. This one, when I pull this trigger, effortlessly goes. See how it just crisply release. There's no noises. Listen. No noises. When you pull this action back, it's so smooth. It's just like a python because it's a python action. This old gun is a coil spring action. Inside, it's the same exact action only exploded version of what they used to do on the old king cobras the vintage king cobras which is also something that people collected they've cooled off a lot but people were all over those things there for a while because they see cold on them they were a snake gun make no mistake about it until this thing came out the only real snake gun was the cold python nothing else mattered none of them worked like that <clears throat> so if I take this action, pull it back, I'm gonna pull this trigger and hold on it. I can sit there and wiggle this cylinder. I'm not talking so you can hear it. I can wiggle it back and forth. If you take the new one, 
the ones everybody loves to hate on pull this back pull this trigger i'm trying to move it right now i'm trying my best watch my thumb turning red from trying to move it you are not moving it that thing is bank vault tight it's that tight this has got the leaf spring action from the new Colt Python. This has got a coil spring action. It's got a terrible coil spring action in it. So, when I tell you that they don't make things like they used to, well, it's a good thing because if they made this gun like they did this one, I don't think they'd sell one of them. Collectors are wing nuts. They go crazy over seeing something like this. But I've just showed you how it's not even close. Oh, another difference is the front sight's pinned in on that one. This one you can change it with an Allen head right here on top. Both of them, the crown, the barrel, the crown is recessed in it. I'd actually forgotten about that. That was actually kind of cool about the Anaconda in the 90s. But it actually did have a recessed crown in it. The Python never did. The new ones do, but the, the old ones never did. But anyway, gun prices or any prices, any kind of commodity, anything, is driven by what people will pay for it. And when those Colt Pythons went through the roof where they did, people started grabbing on to any Colt revolver that had the name of a snake on the side of it. And this was one of them. And I promise you, this gun right now... If you were to um if you were to buy this gun anywhere on the secondary market like gun broker or something like that or in one of your local gun stores that happen to have this thing in stock this would cost two thousand plus dollars all day long this gun is still being manufactured you can buy it anywhere and it's fifteen hundred dollars and just look at the difference it goes prettier it is how shiny it is i've done nothing to this gun except for change those grips and put that sight on it and i don't think there's a person walking on this earth can tell me this is not a better looking gun not a better made gun it would take you three seconds to hold both of them if you didn't know anything about the value on them if nobody ever told you anything about the value and just had these two sitting in a gun case and you handled both Everybody would leave with that one. Everybody would. This thing would be sit there until it rotted away long after we're dead. But people love these things, so man. I do not know why, but they did. I like I was one of those people. I had one. I went and got one and I mentioned in another video it was one of the biggest disappointments of any firearm I've ever bought. I got rid of it. I usually don't sell firearms, but I, I sold that one actually traded it for a watch at the time and well, that's another story then we're just talking about these two guns right now but as far as i know nobody else has a video on here explaining the difference in these two guns and they're not even close this gun here python grits will fit on it because it's got the same frame as the new colt python and the new colt python's got the same grip frame as the old python this one's completely different you cannot fit these grips on this this is only specific to the old cold anacondas but it looks like a pretty beefy gun until you compare it to this this thing is massive this thing is the cat's meow when it comes to freaking firearms this is one of my favorite guns that i have believe it or not i have some that are way more expensive and some that are way cheaper not, money does not make something good just because something's valuable doesn't mean it's good this is valuable that is two thousand plus dollars right there but it is not good i'm going to do another video while i have it i'm going to compare it to um my Smith & Wesson 629 that's made about the same time frame. I had a video where I compared this one to it. And I said they're pretty close, but there was a lot of work had to be done to the Smith to make it as good as this one. I don't think you could ever make this thing as good as either one of them. It's that bad. It's just, it's just a very roughly put together gun. They put this ventilated rib on it just so it looked like a Colt Python, but that is the only thing. 
that resembles a Colt Python or that gun right there. But anyway, folks, if you have any questions on it, feel free to ask. I am really familiar with Colt revolvers. I've had a bunch of them. I've, that's, Colts are my thing. I'll be happy to answer for you if I know. If I do not know, I'll just straight up tell you I do not know. But like I said, I don't think anybody else has another video comparing this old Anaconda to the new Anaconda. And I don't think anybody else would be honest to tell you because there were so much money because they're Colts that that old Anaconda is not a good gun. So which one is better? Usually I say... I'll let y'all decide. I'm telling you, that one's better. It's not even close. I mean, it's not even close. That one is a way better gun. Well, anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching it. And let me know if there's anything you want to know. Thank you again for watching my video.